<laughs> Let's just pretend to be dead. They won't find us. Yep, it's just junk. Then again, the Dingwall always was junk. Hey, I resent that. Well, you got us caught. Yeah, this is episode 7. Star Trek Picard. Season 3, episode 7. Dominion. Are we going to make this Frontier Day a Dominion Day? Uh, is the Dominion to blame? Is it the Separatist Changelings? Is Vatic on her own? Who is this guy called Face? Did you notice if you turn captions on, the character that Vatic is constantly communing with is called Face? What's up with that? Who knows? This is Dominion. For those who don't know, the Dominion were our primary adversary towards the end of Deep Space Nine. Not going to spoil how that ended, but for the purposes of this review, understand that Chintaka was a place where a pivotal battle took place in the Dominion War, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, we get questions, we get answers. Admittedly, this episode is exciting, but it's about as exciting as you would find the experience of a car crash. Hey, I just survived that car crash narrowly. Boy, am I excited. Well, you kind of had to narrowly dodge a car crash. That's how I felt about this episode. I don't think I'm alone in thinking this is the weakest one of this series. I watched it. I kind of felt bad. I tried to watch it again. I felt a little worse. It's just piling up, you know, the things that are hard to believe. And right from minute one, right to the end, it was just piling it on. I was willing to excuse a lot of stuff last episode because the episode that we did get was very fun. This one, we're piling on even harder to believe concepts for not much payoff. Again, if you like breakneck action, minute to minute, uh, plot details, pow pow, right in the kisser, this one's going to be good. I mean, a part of me was on the edge of my seat. But a part of me, the part that included the brain, was also slouching back in the seat saying, wait a minute, what's going on? And a lot of these little questions I had ended up to the detriment of this episode. And you know what I always say, this is serialized um, storytelling. Every episode leads into another. You see, it's like all one connected experience. So when one's bad, it hits a lot harder. A bad episode hurts you know and uh, after having survived discovery and picard and what have you think what you want up to this point i was kind of done with serialized storytelling and star trek i just kind of admitted to myself that maybe it wasn't that good of an idea the lows of a serialized story are really low and the highs can only be so high but when each episode is separate lows aren't that low because you know the next episode is going to be totally different. I've opined on this many times. But this episode was bad enough that in the serialized nature of this show, it it kind of, it, it's foreboding. It makes me wonder about where the season's going to go. And something else that was extremely spooky to me was that, if you remember, at the behest of my own viewers, I chose to watch preview-style material uh, influencer um, material regarding season three before it came out. A lot of these people who were uh, giving uh, previews uh, in a sense before um, the show came out, weeks before perhaps, many of them were saying that they got the first six episodes, if you remember correctly. Uh, and it's interesting to note that the first episode that kind of felt actually bad was episode 7. So we all got the first 6. And then eh, maybe don't give them the next 4. Because they're kind of stanky. <laughs> Hopefully I'm just looking too much into it. And it's really nothing. I mean maybe we can bounce right back. This season has done better. It can do better. I feel like I'm scolding a pretty good student. You know. Hey apply yourself. You can do better. <laughs> this is... Star Trek Picard Season 3, Episode Dominion. Let's 
look down into that cup and see how much of it is filled with silt. The previous episode, there was only about this much silt in the bottom. Now we're getting like this much silt. And we kind of got to watch how we drink it. We kind of just got to do a little sippy sip. Don't just chug it. You're going to get a lot of silt and crud. Let's see what's going on with Dominion. Uh, our, co- our costumes have changed. I don't I don't know. I mean, we're on a clock here. Frontier Day is right around the corner. Not that much time could have passed. But everybody's in these slick kind of excursion jackets and stuff. And from preview images, I kind of figured we were going to be going on an away mission. I was kind of excited. But that's not what's going on. You see, our characters are just, hey, we're fugitives. Let's dress like it. Get the cool jackets on. Let's uh, let's act like uh, like we mean business, and let's just have the excursion outfits on. What I assume is the excursion outfits on, while we're not excursing anything. Uh, in fact, we're hiding in Chintaka. Okay, uh, the scrap field, scrapyard field of junk, uh, where the Battle of Chintaka took place, left behind many a starship. We can hide there. We just gotta act like we're dead. Right? This is what we do in this episode. We also meet ba, 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 Tim Russ. Tim Russ is back in this episode. For those of you who don't know, that's Tuvok. A little sad. We had Tom Paris in Lower Decks. We had Jane Way, Prodigy, of course. We had Seven in this. And now we got Tuvok. Where's Harry Kim? I haven't seen Harry Kim in a while. What's he up to? Let's bring him back. You see, we're trying to detect if Tuvok is a changeling. We're looking for friends here. We're looking for any help we can get. And uh, it's looking like we're kind of alone here. Because we're talking to Tuvok. And we're looking over the side. And we got this little panel? Where it's like analyzing his voice to see if he's like lying or not. Or see if it's a changeling. And... First instinct, I was just like, no, wait a minute. No. These changelings, they wouldn't... You, For some reason, it just doesn't feel right that you can detect them like that. I was just like, nah. Nah. <laughs> no. Miss me with that. That's not what... <laughs> you can't... <laughs> just to find out if he's... Ask him a question. Just ask him questions. And then we get around to that. We didn't need the stupid voice detection thing. I don't know where that came from. But it sucks that it was in the first five seconds and it was immediately off-putting to me. It was just kind of a... It wasn't good or bad. It was just kind of a huh thing. You know, I think that makes you go, hmm. Uh, just ask Tuvok questions only he could answer. You know? And basically, we ask him, oh, uh, we play games of Kalto. Oh, yes, you beat me. Oh, ha, 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 this is Tuvok, right? And it play, the, the, the Voyager music swells and I felt betrayed. Okay, and a tear came to my little eye that they betrayed me with this music. They abused me. I'm beaten and abused. Because it turned out, upon a further question, oh, a Vulcan would never go to Acleon, uh, and I never got my uh, neural uh, systems uh, regulated there. Uh, we did it with a mind meld. I think I'm inserting that in because I remember the episode of Voyager. But you, a Vulcan would never go there because of the anti culinary protests. And I was just thinking... Okay, maybe the neural system regulating could have happened between now and Voyager, and why couldn't a Vulcan just go to this pl- planet that had an anti coronary protest? Why, why not? He can do what he wants. A Vulcan would never go. What do you mean a Vulcan would never go? He, he's Tuvok. He can just, if he wants to go, he'll go. These could have, These things don't feel like like knockout questions that you would ask a changeling to see if they're a changeling. They feel like things that you could reasonably get wrong and still not be a changeling. Like I would have come up with some better questions, but he reveals himself, you see, because he's stupid. Changelings are stupid in this. He revealed immediately after failing these two questions, pop quiz. What, what about this planet? And what about this neural system thing? Oh, you failed. Well, well, you caught me. I'm Mr. Evil changeling man. I just revealed myself. (laughs) But they tricked me with the Voyager music. Don't use the Voyager music and then have it be for a bluff. Don't catch me in, you know, a fake out 
with that music, now I'm going to be wondering. It's sacrilege. Don't ruin the music in that way. You use it when the moment is genuine. Did you feel the same way? Maybe you didn't, but I felt like it was. this was kind of a little bit of a betrayal of the music. And this is going to be a betrayal of Tuvok if we don't see the real Tuvok. I will not be happy. I won't be a happy camper if we brought back Tim Russ and he was only playing a changeling Tuvok. We need to see the real Tuvok of the end, at the end. They did point out that we're not, when we're done with him, quote-unquote, he's still alive. We need now to see him in the finale or something. I mean it. Or I'm going to be upset retroactively with this episode if we don't. Um, and because we called his ship, his ship is now pinging our ship, and it's going to reveal our presence, but... Thankfully, Jordy is on the bridge to work his techno babble to stop the communications relay from revealing where our ship is. I don't know what's going on with all that. The shenanigans with hiding this ship is getting hard to believe. It's starting to get into the realm of magic. I don't know. I think if you were talking over video communication with Tuvok, they would know where your ship is. Kind of. Or are we pinging off multiple relays and we're shutting them down one by one because Jordy hacked them or something? Is that a good enough explanation for you? I just made it up and it's not a bad explanation for me. Regardless, we're running out of friends and we can't keep doing this, Captain. We can't keep doing this. One of these times we're going to get caught for reals. Well... Worf and Raffi are just gone in this episode. Where did they go? I guess they're on the La Serena. Is the La... where was the La Serena just following the Titan? I don't remember. It was a few episodes ago. I'm too dumb to remember that long ago. How did they get to the Titan? Uh, did they leave the La Serena on that planet? Are they taking it now to go to Exoport? In the dialogue, it is revealed that they've taken some ship to go to Exoport. To monitor the situation there. To look for Riker. Essentially we are looking for Riker. The overarching goal of this episode. Is to find Riker. And get away from changelings. Okay. You'll see how that works out in this episode. Um, because Riker remains thoroughly unsaved. He sent us a compromised code. You see. Riker is a genius. And what he did. Was he sent out a signal. That revealed where the Titan was. Because the signal had to come from the Shrike. It's a Starfleet compromised captain code that only goes out when the captain's caught, you see. But he just revealed where the Titan is to the Shrike using that code. Which means it probably wasn't Riker. It was probably just the Shrike getting smart and just pretending that that code was indeed from Riker. And it really wasn't. That was my first instinct. I mean, put two and two together. Put two and two together. You, Tuvok said that Starfleet doesn't have... Tuvok, quote-unquote, said the Starfleet doesn't have Riker. Okay, fine, whatever. Where is he then? Well, he's on the Shrike. You know somehow that the Changelings are not totally aligned with the, crew, the, the, the Shrike crew. There is something going on with the crew of the Shrike that separates them from the average Changeling. When Vatic caught Riker, she turned around and I think she shot those other Changelings. I think they were Changelings. I can never tell in this episode. Maybe that's the point, but there's something going on. There's a divide, right? Um, we see in a scene with Vatic uh, on the Shrike, her hand coming off again, her hand turning into the face. Listen, the face says, your, your physiology is not as cool as you think. Watch this. Boom. And then kind of like shakes her entire form. Uh, he says, he says this line. I, I, I rewinded or rewound, watched it a bunch of times. He literally says, you and your kind. To Vatic. Vatic is not solid as far as we know. What does he mean? You and your kind. You had better figure this stuff out. By Frontier Day, get Jack, or you and your kind are going to suffer. That's a paraphrase. It's in a matter of speaking. 
This is what he said. You and your kind. Is this face character not a changeling? And actually the hand? What it is, is a communications device that has a long distance, say, telepathic link to someone else? Or is it a communications link to somebody else who's on the Shrike that we didn't meet yet? The true villain. Theories abound, but he did say you and your kind. These changelings, the separatists say changelings, from the Great Link, who have, who have separated from the Great Link for revenge, their mysterious benefactor may not be a changeling. And I got, I got a few theories that I'll save. Um, kind of hope it's not right, my theory. But we need to get Jack Crusher. Uh, Vatic. I'm absorbed. I'm completely absorbed in every scene with Vatic. You may say it's hokey. You may say it's cockamamie. I say it's interesting. I say a bland character, bland motivations, bland backstory. It doesn't matter because the performance is so fun. I'm just, I'm engrossed. What can, what can I say? I'm not going to lie and say it's boring. It wasn't. Vatic wasn't boring. I'm sorry. I, I just don't find that. The minute I think Vatic as a character jumps the shark, so to speak, I'll tell you. But that moment has not come yet. It may come next episode. Who knows? But we're going to find the Titan. We find the Titan hiding in plain sight. I think we have an idea. Uh, a conversation between Picard and Jack. What if we do have the advantage? I mean, I like a good fight, especially one where it's cheating, and I'm the one who's cheating. A great line from Jack. Jack's really growing on me. I hope he's growing on you. Just not in a weird changeling way. Let's let's have it not let's have him not grow on us in that way. He's psychic, you see. He can hear the voices in people's head he, heads. He can hear what Sydney's thinking. Why doesn't he touch my hand? Hand touch. <laughs> Why did he touch my hand? Are you psychic or something? Adding another superpower to the list for a magical superhero Jack Crusher now. He's just about to, we're just on the verge of ruining it. We don't need a super-powered character. I'm tired of that trope. We don't need super-villains and superheroes. We need regular villains and regular heroes in Star Trek. Uh, we need larger than life, but we don't need physics breaking. We don't need cheating. We don't need uh, characters who break out in wackadoodle karate moves out of nowhere and then read people's minds i think i think we're, we're pushing things a little bit too far when we just attribute those in extreme abilities to jack crusher out of nowhere when did this start when did his psychic episode start could he always do this he says to picard that he always felt different i'm a little bit spooked are you this could get really stupid really fast it kind of does in this episode but we're hiding in plain sight. We're hiding amongst the wreckage. And apparently Vatic is so dumb that she couldn't tell that the Titan was just trying to trap them. Um, you could look at this in multiple ways. I choose to give her the benefit of the doubt in such a way as she's fallible. Okay, you could look at this and say, this is the episode where Vedic is stupid. This is the episode that ruins Vedic because Vedic is dumb. Well, you could also say this is the episode that makes Vedic look really desperate. This is the episode that makes it look like Vedic is playing the clock in a way that the other changelings aren't. There's a, th This is the episode that makes her look fallible, impulsive, and in physical danger in a way that the other changelings are not at least displayed that way on screen. That you could look at this and say, this is interesting. And that's how I choose to look at it. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt at this point. Vatic, uh, even though one of her crew members says, ah, oh, this could be a trap, she goes along with it anyway. Prepare a boarding party. Um, yeah, Vatic, let's just go down to that obvious trap. And we do. And similar to that one episode of TNG where Data kind of took over the Enterprise by putting up shields between... Uh, uh, rooms on the ship. It's something that you can do. You could say it's derivative or you could say you could say it's canonically uh, relevant. You could say that it's par for the course. I'm just going to put it at that and say it's just kind of in the middle.
oh well, it's just something we can do. Let's abuse it. People who haven't seen it might think it is cool. And people who have seen it are going to say, oh, that's just like that one episode. Good enough, then. We trap Vatic and her changeling boarding party in uh, cleverly arranged force fields so that we're running and they stop at a force field behind us. We're locking them in, so to speak. We're blocking them in. We're blinding them off. And that's how we catch them. And according to Shaw, he says, holy crap, we caught them. Like, we couldn't believe that it worked, but it worked, because in this one moment, we caught Vatic. You know, we caught Vatic in a moment that was not her best moment, but we caught them. And, I mean, we saw a changeling in this season uh, morph into goop and then go into a vent. Just, why, why are they stuck what? We should have seen one of them trying to get out through a vent or something, and then realize that the shield actually covers the entire internal surface, right, of the hall, not just the walls. I, I just, I don't know. I just didn't believe it. I don't, I just don't believe these changelings. Changelings die really easy in this season. They can't change into anything, really. I don't know. I mean, we have established biologically that these changelings are different from the changelings we know. But other than being better at hiding, it's a strict downgrade. It's a downgrade. Okay, you can hide. But it seems like people can beat you in hand-to-hand -hand combat. No. No, no, no. You can't beat a changeling in hand-to-hand -hand combat. You cannot, you cannot get the better of them up close. If, if you ever get within five feet of a changeling, you are dead. Okay? But not these ones. Um, changelings has been, have been shown before to die in strange ways, um, but it wasn't that common. And you would often see changelings just... You go to hit them, and they would just morph in such a way that there was nothing there when you were where you were going to hit. There's just a hole there. Or this changeling... In these combat scenarios in season three, this ch one of these changelings should just turn into a bird and fly away, turn turn into a snake and coil around their neck and crush their head, instantaneously. Like you can't even it's blindingly fast. You can't even see what's happening. That's a changeling. These changelings, I don't know what are they stuck. Again, where we are in this episode, referring to this boarding party as changelings, but they won't change. I don't know. It's starting to. It's starting to irk me. Like, had this episode been fantastic, I could have excused a few weird bits, but this is getting bad. Like I said, the cup is filling up with silt. Um, what's worse than that is we turn on data. Data. Or is it data lore? Data lore soon. B4 data lore soon. B soon for lore data. Uh, listen, we can't take down that partition. If we do that, lore might kill data. But Alton Sung must have done it for a reason. Picard, think of the Curlin Nasco. Or Nascar, I forget what you call it. Think. Everybody is multiple people on the inside. We need to have internal debates to be human. To be sentient, as it were. So do the secrets to humanity's free will lie within the body of data lore? Geordi speculates as much. However, this speculation gives way to extreme fear. Uh, lore takes over. <laughs> And they left Lore plugged into the ship. Very smart. They let Lore just run rampant around the ship. Lore and Data, who were previously solely in charge of looking after Daystrom Station, are now looking after the Titan. But in doing so, they're tearing down the borders, which is the force fields, that are locking Sydney and Jack Crusher away from the boarding party changelings, who are going to either kill them or forcibly extract them. Lore... Why is he doing this? He loves the chaos. A little bit much. I mean, I had speculated that Lore would be a villain here. Um, interesting that you can see Data turn to Lore just by the change in his face. All right, You can see Brent Spiner just go from this to this. And you know it's Lore. Very funny. And we're separated by a glass barrier. Or is it transparent aluminum, laddie? Um... Lore, please, if Data's in there, let him out. Data, 
I can't bear to see you die. We have a little, uh, a lovingly portrayed discovery dialogue here, which worked for me because we spent seven years together with Data and Jordy, and we know that they're friends. They tried to establish Data as being like Picard's best friend or something in season one, and I just didn't believe it because we all knew Picard's real best friend ever was Jordy. Jordy treated him like a real person, and they completed each other, their personalities, as it were. So this, it kind of, it kind of hit for me. It was a little bit hammy. It was a little bit on the nose, but you know, I can excuse a little bit here and there. And I'm not, I'm not totally heartless, but Lore seems to be in this moment. Uh, but Data wins up, and eventually. Uh, our characters are freed from their force fieldy prison. However, not before Jack psychically tells Sydney how to fight the changelings. Oh my god. Man, I don't know. Guess what, guys? You want to be the changeling? I got I got some pro tips for you. Here's how you beat a changeling. Roll, duck, kick, and then shoot. It's so slow. It's like, it's like nothing's even happening. It's these changelings. Ah, just hit them. I don't know. Yeah, they can't. They don't turn the area of their body where you're hitting them to stone instantaneously to make it so the hit doesn't do anything. They can't do that. I guess they're just dumb. And Sydney somehow beats them just with psychic help from Jack. I was willing to kind of barely buy that Jack could beat them hand to hand because we don't know what Jack is, quote unquote, right? But Sydney is a person, it's the regular human. It's really? Can that really happen? I would have honestly rather somehow Jack uses psychic power to talk to the changeling and tell the changeling to disintegrate and then have the changeling just explode. Completely insane. Completely ridiculous. But is it as ridiculous as Sydney beating a changeling hand-to-hand -hand and then just shooting him and he's dead because Jack talked to her psychically? Somebody please explain. Uh, it's, I just don't believe it. This is... I mean, they brought changelings back to what ruined them? Make them look dumb? Make them look weak? I don't know. A fearsome villain they are not. I don't know what to tell you. If we can just keep beating changelings over and over and over again... It's, they're not, you know, they're not scary if you can just destroy them. Am I wrong? We do capture Vatic, and there's a conversation between Beverly and Picard that I'm sure is a joke. There is no way they had a conversation this on the nose, talking to each other, good cop, bad cop, holding their phaser. Are we about to compromise our ideals? Are we about to go back on an entire lifetime of moral choices to just shoot this changeling? As if that'll work. That won't work. But Vedic, they know Vedic's listening. Maybe she'll give up the ghost if we just pretend we're going to shoot her. Yeah, no, you guys are stupid. That's not going to happen. It's not going to work like that. You guys are pretending to be all badass, but really, Vedic is just like, I'm a changeling. It's not going to work, right? And it doesn't. For some reason, Vedic is just a better changeling and gets away. The force fields come down, but Vedic just goes bloop and turns into goop. They start shooting at her anyway, and it does nothing. So now that we're clearly shooting at the goop, and it just does nothing, and I don't know why Vedic gets away and the others couldn't, Vedic is just better, because Vedic is important to the plot, and therefore scoots away into a vent somehow. Lucky that was there. I mean, you were acting like you were going to shoot her, and then maybe you weren't, but then you did, and it did nothing. Yeah. Interesting plot here. Let's let's get caught on purpose. Let's pretend we're junk. Vedic gets on the ship. We catch Vedic. Let's pretend we're going to kill her. Then we try to. Then she gets away. And we're way worse off than we started. Like, I don't know about you, but... We know how the portal weapon works now. Right? Vedic is on the Titan. Why isn't the Shrike just wreaking havoc with that portal weapon while Vedic is on the ship just to cause chaos? And for that matter, if the audience knows how the portal weapon works, the Titan crew knows how the portal weapon works, 
We got the upper hand. We know probably where they are because we got the compromise signal from Riker. Let's just go in guns blazing. We might win. <laughs> we might. <laughs> it's not as crazy as you think. Just doing that, getting the advantage of the surprise attack is not as crazy as you might think. It's maybe only 1% crazier than pretending to be garbage in space and not hiding your life signs and letting them come to you, hoping they bring a boarding party, just hoping they don't transport on at the exact right spot. Just pure luck they brought a boarding party that we could catch. Jeez, guys, I don't know which plan's better, but I'd like to say it worked out, but it kind of didn't. We did get an interesting conversation between Vatic, Picard, and Beverly, where the mystery box fine looked like, finally looked like the mystery box was about to open. We're on episode 7 here, guys. It's time to open the mystery box and let me see what's going on. Stop it with the dialogue that is intentionally nebulous, um, foggy, misleading, and inconclusive. Vatic does reveal her origin story. Or does she? Is there something different going on? Methinks this is not the complete story. You see, the Dominion lost the Dominion War. Spoilers for Deep Space Nine, I know. You should have watched it by now. Uh... You guys voted on not giving us the cure to that virus that you created. Blaming it on Starfleet. No spoilers for Deep Space Nine. But Starfleet is a, a little bit more innocent with this than this episode would make it look. In fact, Vedic was quote-unquote created by Section 31 scientists. I believe that is literally the canon at this point. A Section 31 scientist operating on a captured changeling prisoner from the Dominion War at Daystrom Station, exposed uh, her and her brethren, these strangelings, to uh, thalomium or something like that, some chemical with a hundred-year half-life, granting them uh, the magical ability to morph a lot more accurately, but reducing their lifespan, hundred-year half-life, if you know that about chemistry and how that works. So you exchange your lifetime, your life expectancy, for power. We had accidentally created this new type of changeling. The scientist working on them looked like Vedic. It was just the actress portraying Vedic. And then this changeling just comes to life, kills Vedic, takes on her visage, and then gets herself that weird haircut. And I laughed. I had a hearty laugh out loud. I don't know if it's good or bad to laugh at it, but I just... <laughs> You'd think this changeling would look exactly like the doctor that was working on them. This new Vedic would look exactly like her, but it's not. It's a little different and has the haircut. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm thankful for the laugh, but maybe you should have made it look exactly like that doctor and then let the audience insert their own kind of in between brain cannon to explain where that haircut came from, maybe. I mean, who knows what could have happened between then and the events of Star Trek Picard Season 3, right? Maybe it should just look exactly the same and just leave the audience to fill in the blanks, but instead we just, so the audience knows that this is the new Vedic. We just gave her the haircut and the weird look. This actress is more than capable of portraying Vedic, the changeling, over the original scientist working on these changelings with just the look in her face. More than capable of doing that. But they just, I don't know, gave her the new haircut and called it a day? Give me a break. Well, this origin story, spoiler for Deep Space Nine, is a lot like Odo's origin story. Um, unknown sample, Cardassian scientist, ODO, Odo. And then Odo mimics a scientist that was working on him. I believe that's how it went. It's exactly like that, except bad. Um, regardless, Vatic did pick up an ominous tune. I think it's Three Blind Mice. She picked it up from the doctor whistling that. And you know they just picked that because it was ominous. Having an ominous thing that you can just whistle in the background. What is it with whistling in this season? Data's whistling. They get the dates from station... Riker whistles back, and then Vedic's whistling, 
what's what's with the whistling? I, I don't know. It seems like it might be an unintentional link between these things, or maybe it means something, and I'm just blind. Um, she also says that this symphony was not created with brass and strings. It was created with boots on the concrete or something and wheels spinning. And they show an old-timey wheel on a on a, a desk spinning around on the floor. And I'm just thinking, this isn't a Section 31 hospital scenario or lab. No, that's not what it would be like. You would not hear wheels moving around on the floor like that and squeaky boots. Like, what? what are you thinking? This is not... That would be like 200 plus years ago before you would, last time you would hear that. This is 2401. These tables would be anti-grav. I mean, we've seen it in the background before of older Star Trek. What What's going on? I just don't believe it. I don't believe Section 31's facilities would look this bad. It, it would look in excess of what you saw on the face of uh, Starfleet Medical. It would, it would be like in excess of that because it's hidden, Right. Well, that's Vedic's story, and the mystery box closed a little bit more when she said, you don't know who Jack really is. Who's Jack? You think Jack's for me? Jack's not for me. Jack's not for you either. I'm going to take Jack back to where he belongs. It's time to learn, learn who he truly is, and it's time for the audience to not learn, because Vedic takes over the bridge. She, oh, I, I guess it's a good thing, but when Vedic is in the turbo lift and Shaw gets in the same turbo lift with Vatic, and in those few seconds waiting to go up to the bridge, I was so scared Shaw was going to die. I guess that's a good thing. That means they made me care. I was terrified. I was saying, come on, come on, come on, make it, come on, come on. I was waiting, and then finally, he started to move on the ground a little bit, you know, after they got to the bridge, uh, bloodied and bruised. <sighs> He's okay, guys. He's okay. We're going to make it. <sighs> Good job making me care about a new character. To be honest, if this was anyone from Season 1 or Season 2, I wouldn't care. Go ahead, die. I don't care. I don't care if I ever see you again. But now, they're making me care. Thanks a lot, guys. She's not taking the bridge. Oh, wait, now she is. I, I guess we're dead. And in true Trek trope fashion, the bad guy takes the bridge. We had Star Trek 2. Now do we have Star Trek 3? The Titan is now under control of Vatic and her group of changelings. I, I should like to address my ship. Attention, everyone. Blah, blah, blah. Jack Crusher, it's time to find out who you really are. Wonderful performance. I loved it. I know I'm kind of making it look stupider than it is. I'm just doing that for fun. That's how our episode ends. And it did feel a little short. I believe this episode only clocked in at about 43 minutes. So I felt a little bit shortchanged. What do we get here? Uh, Vatic's making mistakes. The crew of the Titan just make a bunch of mistakes. And somehow it ends up in favor of Vatic. Just out of sheer luck. Man, it's a good thing we sent that boarding party instead of sending... <laughs> instead of just transporting in everywhere. Man, it's a good thing that my changelings just refuse to change. I don't know what it is. We just refuse to do any kind of changeling-style combat. And we can just get obliterated by old-timey phasers. We have, in this season so far, new phasers, old phasers, and really old phasers. Jack looks like he's got a TOS phaser. The crew of the Titan got the new ones, and I think I saw a war for the vacuum cleaner attachment. A confusing episode. A downer episode. A cacophony of errors. Uh, in order for this plot to work, a lot of people needed to make a lot of mistakes. Um, Jack's a superhero now, and apparently you can beat a changeling... Uh, just with minimal effort and strength. And, you know, if the changeling is intentionally pulling their punches, I guess we can say that. That's what you're getting out of this episode. Um, it's time to just turn off data lore. It's time to just turn them off. I, he better not come back online. We also have the very, 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 very spooky line from data in this episode saying, uh, the previous diagnosis of Eremotic Syndrome in Old Picard might be inconclusive. No, don't do that. Don't try to undo the Eremotic Syndrome. Don't do that. You're messing with the original formula. 
uh oh, they better not be making it so Eremotic Syndrome is actually something else that has to do with changelings all along. I will be upset. I had theorized that originally, and I hope my theory was wrong, but they come up with this harebrained explanation for why they need Picard's body and Jack. Could it be that we take Picard's body and use Jack's blood? Jack has magic blood, of course. This is New Trek, so blood is magic, right? Like from Star Trek Into the Darkness. And we need his blood to to somehow fill in the gaps in Picard's DNA to create a perfect Picard replica that can pass the bioscan to go to Frontier Day? And I'm just thinking, why do we need Picard at Frontier Day? Just say he couldn't make it. He was sick. He's old. I don't know. Why does he have to be there? It, it, it just it boggles the mind trying to think of why that would be important for the Changelings to have Picard there, number one. Maybe I just can't think of it right now. And then number two, trying to somehow repair old Picard's DNA with Jack's DNA. Like DNA's Legos or something. I don't know. It's, why would why is Picard's old body DNA breaking down? Why is it not? What What is it? Like, it feels like Starfleet and Section 31, for that matter, technology would perfectly preserve the body as it was as it was at the time of death. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Eremotic Syndrome somehow ruined old Picard's DNA. I don't know. But it's just it's something more explanation needed, a rewrite needed, a rethink. Maybe, hopefully that's not their plan, to somehow recreate Picard and have two Picards. And then Picard has to get Eremotic Syndrome back to get Jack Crusher superpowers so we can have superhero Picard flying around psychically reading people's minds and then just karate chopping them to death please don't let that happen this episode has a lot of bad omens in it and i hope this isn't this isn't a bad omen for that this better not happen um musically we're cheating with the voyager theme we're using the voyager theme in a sacrilegious way we're using it to trick us into thinking we had a real friend in tuvok when we didn't very bad although there was some interesting music when our characters are fighting those changelings behind those force fields and lore was taking over the ship, an interesting, sad kind of dirge, if you will, was playing. So I'll give it points there. It was unique and it was interesting and it caught my ear. You know, it stood out from the, the mess that was the rest of this episode. Uh, visually, where where's Tuvok? Where was his ship? He was just on video. It would have been cool to see a ship... Would have been cool to see. Whenever you have a scrapyard, that is such a good excuse to show lots of old cool ships. And we didn't do it. We saw an old Vulcan ship for some reason. You know, a Dakir class, I believe, from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Whatever. I guess it's good. I guess it's hard to keep a good class down. But missed opportunities abound in that regard. Plot. I mean, we are moving it forward. You can't say the plot wasn't exciting. You can't say that. But thematically. What? I don't know what's going on here. Something about losing your kids, the threat of losing Sydney and and Jack at the same time. We had becoming a father, and now we have the theme of unbecoming a father. But it would have been better to pair Picard and Jordy together in more scenes to hammer that home. As it stands right now, these characters are separate most of this episode, so it's hard to really hit, have it's hard to hammer that theme home when we don't have a moment to discuss it. Uh, failing that, maybe something about hating your creator. Uh, Vatic was created by, she says Starfleet, but it was Section 31, get it straight. Um, I won't get into the details about how they got the cure, but it, because it's kind of an interesting thing with Deep Space Nine that you'll see if you watch it. But Vedic, it seems like Vedic is maybe not totally encompassing all the facts here. Uh, you solids ruin every planet. Name one. My planet. No, we didn't. It's fine now. You were abducted by 
Section 31. We hate them. It's not as clear cut as you think. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what happened, but it's not as clear cut as you think. <laughs> Just being honest. Uh, Jack maybe has, he wa he wants to give himself up to Vedic. You know, Jack feels bad for all the stuff he put us through. He's like us four episodes ago, thinking we should just get rid of Jack logically. You know, wanting to turn yourself in, getting caught by your enemy. Vatic and Jack kind of reflect each other in that way. There is a weird relationship between Vatic and Jack that is firmly in that mystery box. So you see thematically I'm really grasping at strings. That's never a good thing. All said and done, this episode... I'm going to call it the worst one yet, but I think I may have given out this score before. The best I can do, the, the best I can do is a 4 out of 10. I've never seen a drop like this. <laughs> like, we went from 7 to 4. That's rare, for, even for modern Trek, to hit that high and then hit this low. Hey, you know, a good season. Can one bad episode keep it down? I don't know. You know? Forget what I said about serialized television. Maybe we can bounce back. Let's let's give it the benefit of the doubt. This up this season has been better so far. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna give it a four, but don't take it as an indictment of the entire thing. There's fun to be had here. Um, ignore those people who are gonna give it a zero. That makes no sense. But <laughs> I think a four for me is fair. I'm just being honest. I'm just being me, and that's all I can do. Um. What did you think? I have a few theories going forward. Um, I still think Riker's going to die. I have a feeling that the next episode is going to take place at the same time as this episode. And it's going to be like a side episode to this one. Where we're going to see it from Riker, Worf, and Raffi's point of view. That could be interesting. It could fill in some gaps here. But I don't know how we're going to fix the whole ease of defeat of the Changelings problem. I don't think we can fix that easily. Um, I think the Changeling's plan with Picard's body is not what we think. I th I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that their actual plan is smarter than what Beverly and Jordy probably came up with in this episode. And I think that Vedic, Vedic's story is not done, somehow. And Jack... Jack is connected to the face. And they better not be paw wraiths. <laughs> they better not be wormhole aliens. It better not be something like that. I'm just going to come out and say that. It better not be that. But it could be... I mean, we're already aping a lot of stuff from Deep Space Nine. And Voyager, for that matter. Better not be that. Um, because the face's goals... Somehow it feels like he's not exactly in a line with the changelings. I don't know why. I just get that perception. Maybe you think differently. Um, I think... I think this episode... I think the next two or three episodes could turn around. Um, but this is definitely a low point. One interesting note. We did see classic style changelings. Look in the background of the lab where that doctor was working on who we now know as Vedic. If you look at the test tubes, you can see they're filled with the uh, orange Kool-Aid or what have you. You know, the classic uh, changeling look, confirming that these new changelings look different, literally because they are biologically different. Thank you for not making me have to go back and re-engineer my memory of old changelings like you tried to do with the new Constitution class in Strange New Worlds before you brought back the old Constitution class in this season. Thank you. Thank you for making my memories valid again. Um, that was Picard, Season 3, Episode 7, Dominion. Hopefully it's better next time. Uh, let's not give in to doom and gloom just yet. I'm Lieutenant Mark, and I'm going to see you when next I see you. So long.